everyone, welcome to the Penguin Prof channel. Today, as you can see, we're going to talk about hemoglobin and myoglobin and how to get some oxygen. Problem is, there's not much oxygen dissolved in blood plasma, about three tenths of a mil of oxygen um, per 100 cc's of blood. Uh, that's really not enough to get anything done. So the question is, you know, where's the oxygen? Um, oxygen is going to be carried by two molecules. That's what this video is about, hemoglobin and myoglobin. We're going to be doing some compare and contrast here. Hemoglobin is found in the blood and myoglobin is found in muscle tissue. They both contain iron at the center of the heme group, but my, myoglobin has a much higher oxygen affinity at low partial pressures of oxygen. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a few minutes. Another big difference between the two molecules is that hemoglobin is pH sensitive, while my myoglobin is not. Structurally, they're very different. Uh, myoglobin has one heme group and can therefore only bind one molecule of oxygen, whereas hemoglobin has four. And this difference in structure is going to account for a lot of the differences in function that we're going to see. One of the nice things I like to think about, I, you, you guys know I love cartoons, is that hemoglobin is found in the blood and it can bind up to four molecules of oxygen. Myoglobin only binds one, but myoglobin holds on really, really tight. We're going to see why. This is what the molecules look like as they become uh, bound to oxygen. So here they are completely unsaturated. There are no oxygen molecules bound. Um, here is what they look like when there's one molecule of oxygen bound to each. Now myoglobin at this point is full, but we can continue to add molecules of oxygen to hemoglobin. So here it is with two, here it is with three, and now finally both molecules are fully saturated with oxygen. Myoglobin again holding only one molecule and hemoglobin with four. Now, this is the graph that we're going to be looking at in uh, greater detail here in a second. Um, you want to pay attention, first of all, to what the axes are, as always. The Y is oxygen saturation, so all the way at the top, this is 100% saturation. It means that the molecules have as much oxygen as they can hold. The X is the partial pressure of oxygen measured in tor, or millimeters of mercury. It's the same. And uh, using an amazing piece of software called Wolfram Demonstration Project in CDF technology, um, we're going to get to take a look at this in much more detail, and I'll be able to show you what the saturations of myoglobin and hemoglobin look like as we change PO2 and as we change pH. So let's take a look. All right, so what we're going to be able to do here is look at how myoglobin and hemoglobin binding affinities change as the partial pressure of oxygen changes. Right now, the PO2 in the environment is zero, so there is no hemoglobin or myoglobin oxygen binding. Up at the top, we've got two sliders, one that's going to allow me to adjust the amount of oxygen, and the other we're going to look at in a second, and we're going to look at how the pH is going to affect that binding affinity. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to be adding oxygen, and you're going to see myoglobin in blue just shoot up as that myoglobin starts to bind that oxygen. Um, at this point, at relatively low PO2s, we're looking at about 20 torr, myoglobin is done, right? It's only got one site to bind oxygen, and it's basically saturated, whereas hemoglobin is just getting started. As I continue to add oxygen, hemoglobin starts to really pick up steam here. You now see that nice sigmoidal curve as hemoglobin approaches full saturation, which it reaches right about here. Um, basically, the reason why we see this sigmoidal curve in hemoglobin is because the heme groups actually help each other. There is cooperativity here. So as hemoglobin starts to bind oxygen and the molecule changes shape, it makes it more and more likely that more and more oxygens will bind. So basically, once you get to the PO2 that we see in the lungs, both proteins are completely saturated and full with as much oxygen as they can hold. The second slider allows me to adjust blood pH. So 7.4 is a normal blood pH. What I'm going to do is adjust the slider to the left, and it's going to make the blood pH more and more acidic. And you want to watch the curves to see what happens. You kind of got to pay attention here, because now you're starting to see that hemoglobin curve in red flex a little bit. I'm going to call it flexing. But really, it's getting deflected to the right. 
whereas the myoglobin curve does not change. That shift to the right that you saw the hemoglobin takes as the pH drops has a name. It's so important. It's called a Bohr shift. The Bohr shift describes how hemoglobin oxygen binding affinity decreases as the pH decreases. There is a big physiological advantage for that. <clears throat> Just saying. Myoglobin does not show a Bohr shift. So to see that one more time, we're going to go from acidic pH. I'm going to bring it back up to normal blood pH by sliding this guy to the right and watch that hemoglobin curve shift back to where it was before. It shifts back to the left, and now we have our normal curve. So once again, you can see that the Bohr shift affects hemoglobin only, and it does not affect myoglobin at all. That's pretty cool stuff. As always, I want to thank you for visiting the Penguin Prof channel. I hope that was helpful. Please comment and subscribe. Visit the Penguin Prof page on Facebook and follow on Twitter. Good luck.